Thank you all uh, for joining us. My name is Jason Lane. I have the great privilege of being uh, the Dean of the School of Education at the University at Albany, part of the State University of New York. Uh, this is part of our weekly community conversations uh, where we have been bringing people together from throughout the capital region and across the world to talk about pressing issues related to uh, how education is responding to COVID-19. Uh, Today, uh, we're going to be talking about sort of how we might move forward with the work. We have been responding very quickly uh, over the last six to eight weeks. It's kind of, we kind of lose track of time uh, given all that has happened, but uh, a lot of great work has, has uh, been happening and it is now as we are looking toward the summer, uh, some exciting programs uh, that we have lined up and we want to brainstorm with you all collectively about how we could as a community come together better and, and respond to COVID-19 particular making sure that we are supporting uh, our students, our teachers, and our parents uh, and other guardians as we collectively grapple with this new remote learning environment. I would be remiss if I did not mention the backdrop that we're dealing with uh, today, I think, and the, the horrific situations that are happening across uh, our great country, uh, and particularly uh, the many atrocities that have it uh, related to people of color and the brutal deaths that we've been uh, seeing that uh, now so many of our communities are, are working to grapple with in many ways. Uh, it's, it's horrific that I think in this day and age, uh, we continue to, that members of our community have to continue to live in an environment where they have to fear where they jog or where they work or even where they live, uh, not knowing uh, what might happen and transpire. Uh, it's hard uh, for me to put into words, I think even the situation, and I can't, as a white male, I would say of a privilege, I can't fully grasp everything that has been happening, but I think for those of us in, situ uh, in, in the positions we're in, and, and certainly in the School of Education, we have an obligation to listen, uh, to act, uh, to try to create a better world for all. And I'm proud to be part of a School of Education that for the last couple of years has really uh, advanced social justice and equity as a strategic part of who we are as an institution. We have been working diligently to ensure that we could bring more people from diverse backgrounds into uh, teaching and mental health professions uh, because we know that the best way to address some of these systemic issues of racism is to ensure that we have uh, a wide range of individuals in our structures and, and, and in our various organizations. And of course, we know that students of color learn best when they have teachers of color uh, who look like them. And so uh, I think it's important that as we move forward with the work that we're doing, that we're doing so with an equity mindset, that we're making sure that we are addressing all populations, particularly those that are, I think, the most impoverished and disadvantaged. Uh, in our communities and that we find the ways to reach out uh, uh, to be a, a partners, find ways and solutions forward. Um, by no means do we have a solution, but that's important. Um, so today, you know, we're going to talk uh, a little bit of, of a retrospective of where we have been, and then uh, we want to seek your input and guidance where we might go forward. And we're going to hear from some of our panelists today about uh, things that we have already planned for the summer. Uh, and have uh, some conversations with them about that. And uh, that'll be probably take the hour or so. Uh, so Jerry, uh, with that, perhaps we could play the video uh, that, uh, that we have, or I could introduce the panelists first. So with us today, and we'll get to them uh, in a little bit, uh, we have uh, Joe Dragoni, uh, who's with us from the Capital Region BOCES. Joe, you could wave. Uh, we all see your name there, but Joe's a great partner of ours. He's the senior executive officer of the Capital Region BOCES. We do a number of projects with them and we're really excited to be partnering with them again uh, this summer on a series of leading in times of change. Uh, Janine uh, Flinton is with the New York State Master Teacher Program, and uh, which is a phenomenal program. We host the Capital uh, District chapter here at UAlbany. Uh, we'll be working with the master teachers this summer on some summer uh, programming for students in, in the local region. Elena Gordis and Alex Petersey. I've been with us previously on, uh, on our community conversations, faculty members here at the University of Albany, uh, and we'll be hosting a, a series this summer on stress and collective trauma issues. Uh, we know mental health is such an uh, issue right now, given COVID-19 and everything else that's happening right now, I think, uh, regarding uh, uh, race and diversity and equity in our, in our uh, country. So glad to have them with us. Gina Riley uh, also has been a previous presenter, and. Uh, uh, experience in homeschooling, and she will be uh, talking about some micro and mini uh, CTL courses that uh, have been developed uh, for the summer. Uh, Jason Vickers is one of the masterminds behind our remote EB uh, website and is going to be talking a little bit about where we have gotten uh, with that wonderful resource as well as some of the 
uh, another, uh, some micro uh, uh, remote and EV courses moving forward there. And Kelly Wisman, who's been such a champion of the Capital District Writing Project, uh, they were really the first to respond of our community to provide a forum for teachers to come together and to collectively write and think and reflect on how COVID-19 was facing educational issues. And they've got some exciting programs lined up for the summer that we look forward to hearing about. So that's our, those are our panelists for today. We're going to be hearing from each of them uh, in just a little bit. Jerry, I think next is the video. There we go. So my thanks to uh, Jerry Rivera-Wilson and uh, Reza uh, Fezzi and Ga from our Department of Educational Theory and Practice for their hard work in putting that together. That was a, a quick overview of what we've been doing the last several weeks. I think when you see it in that way, it uh, just uh, showed you how much that uh, the communities come together we collectively have been able to uh, move forward and uh, and really sort of as a community discuss and, and deal with. So. Uh, and I think Jerry said there was something like uh, about 60 individuals who she was able to identify specifically that have been part of this process uh, moving forward. So my thanks to all for that. And, and uh, it's been incredible work. And I think we're looking forward to moving forward now uh, to the summer and, and exciting things moving forward. So with that is a reflection. We wanted to take just a moment and uh, ask a couple of questions in the poll here. And uh, if you could use the text chat box, that would be... Uh, well, fantastic. But one is, you know, what initiatives so far for you and those who have been with us along this journey have been the most useful for you uh, moving forward? And so if you don't mind just putting your answers in the check, ch uh, chat box, uh, we'll, we'll look at those and call some of them out. So feel free not to be shy, but I'm just curious what you all think have been the best resources. So the stress presentation, absolutely. We know the mental health issue is, is so critical uh, right now we're all dealing with. Any others anyone would like to add? 
Well, while you're thinking about those, we could turn to the second question. Um, not, not everyone was able to join us, so I, I totally get that. The remote ED website, wonderful. Um, but feel free to you know, answer the second question here too, which is what suggestions would you have for us moving forward? How, how else is a community, uh, particularly as we think about a higher education, K-12, P-20 partnership, uh, might we be able to work together to ensure that we're providing supports for K-12, higher ed, uh, our teachers? Um, yes. Speaking of all that craziness, we know my, my little one here is joining us, so hi. you can say hi real fast. Hi. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Kid bombing, I call that. Zoom bombing is an issue where people dropping in on, on Zoom, so... It's always great now we be home and, and uh, have the little ones stopping by. Uh, the BOCES lessons uh, have been uh, helpful and supportive. I think it's fantastic. It's the great work of Joe and his team and putting those forward. The communications. Absolutely, the issues of inequity, we, and we have to find new, better ways to address those. Well, we appreciate you sharing some of those thoughts. Um, if you please feel free to continue to uh, put other ideas you have in the chat box, we'll be uh, copying those and that'll help us inform the, our work as we're moving forward. So please do send those our way. Uh, and you can always reach us at education at albany.edu, just the generic email address uh, to move us forward. So uh, with that, we wanted to sort of provide a quick update on where we are with remote ED. Uh, the website, and thanks to those of you who know that is one of the most useful resources. Uh, so Jason Vickers, who's here with us today, I'm going to uh, turn it over to him uh, to talk a little bit about where we are with remote ED. Uh, thanks, Jason. Uh, currently, we have around 457 references for learning materials for online learning, and it's an ever-expanding hub of educational resources, so we're always continuing to add to that. I think we have something like 300 resources in the queue that need to be placed up on the website. We have information on how to teach remotely, how to set up your remote classroom. We have content by grade level, content by subject area. We have other resources like self-directed learning, YouTube uploading, collaborations and platforms. And we have links to the School of Education and Atlas Facebook and the Twitter feeds. Um, on the main page, we have an area for information regarding upcoming events. We have a blog with past events, and we have contact information for getting in touch with us for com with comments or suggestions. And on the main page, we have a drop down menu at the top right that actually has over 10 languages. I believe it's got 16 languages that it connects to right now, and we can add to that as people identify languages that are being underrepresented. And we also have a submit a resource button. So if you find a resource that you think would be good for the remote ED website, we do invite you to submit the resource and we will review it and insert it into the resources that we have. On the same main page, we also have a calendar of weekly events and these are updated every week and it's for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you can see that this happens to be up through May, was that what? up to May 20th, and we list all of the things that are happening during those times. We also have a link to a full calendar so you can see what's happening as well. The navigation is pretty easy on the main page. You have a where do you start and let's get started page. If you're new to the site, you can click on the where do, you, do I start, start here button. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can click on the common guide to learn about the page. And at the bottom of that let's get started, we have links to the subject area, the grade area, the parents area, and the equity area. Next slide. On each page, they basically look the same. On the left-hand side, we have a quick links menu. And if you look at the very bottom, you can see that submit a resource button is still there. But we have links to the start page, getting started, resources by grade, by subject, other resources, resources for parents, which is very important and that equity and inclusion area, which is very important. On the right-hand side, we have a accordion menu. So if you hit the plus beside any of those titles, it will expand that menu and give you the resources for the particular areas.
and now I just for Kelly. That's rare. Jason, thank you so much for the overview. There's a lot of great things there. Uh, it does not, uh, what he gave, pro, overview does not nearly provide the depth of resources. Uh, the site has now been, I think, over the last month, has had over uh, 1,200 hits from how many countries, Jason? 84 countries. 84 countries that have, have, have connected with it. Um, and we've got that, we know we have many, many more, you know, before that. So, uh, encourage you to check it out. It's a great resource. And of course, it's a great compliment to the work that the Cap Region BOCES has done on their resource website uh, for actual lesson plans for teachers as well. So, uh, moving forward, we want to talk a little bit more about what's happening this summer uh, in the School of Education. And we have some uh, uh, programs lined up uh, that I think will respond to some of the needs that we're trying to address right now. Uh, first, I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Kelly Wisman, uh, uh, one of the faculty members in the Department of Literacy, Teaching, and Learning, who runs the Capital District Writing Project, uh, to talk about some summer offerings they have. Kelly? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity to join you today. Um, we're really pleased to offer programming for both teachers and students and young people uh, this summer. So as you can see on the slide this um, Monday, we're hosting a Zoom session entitled Writing and Yoga as Restorative Practices. We'll offer three poems, three prompts, and three yoga poses. Um, all are welcome and no yoga experience is necessary. Um, for two weeks in July, um, we will be holding our signature Invitational Summer Institute for teachers in the Capital Region. For the first time in our history, we'll be doing this online. Um, it stems from our core beliefs that all teachers are teachers of writing, that to teach writing well, teachers need to be writers themselves, that teachers are leaders, um, and that writing is a critical skill within a participatory democracy, perhaps now more than ever, as Dr. Lane's comments um, suggested before. Um, the Institute is currently uh, closed. It's by invitation and application only. We've already chosen our 2020 cohort, um, but if you know teachers who could be interested um, for next summer, let us know. Um, we'll also be hosting Young Writers Workshops this July for students in grades one through 12. Registration for this is open, has recently reopened after we decided to move them online. It'll be July 13th through 17th, 9 through 12, um, taught by our talented and dedicated and experienced writing project teachers. Um, we have three separate workshops that are highlighted on the next set of slides. Um, the first one, Writing Like an Artist, um, for younger kids, grades one through five, opportunities to explore different types of storytelling through art, picture books, and photography. The second workshop is called Create Your Own World. This is back by popular demand from last summer. It was quite popular. Um, people, young people will use mixed media creative writing and imaginations to create a, a fictional world. And finally, we have creative writing for the college essay. It gives young people an opportunity to engage in self-reflective writing for the college essay. So thanks so much again, and I'm happy to answer any questions if you want to reach out to me directly or find us on our Facebook page is probably the most um, up-to-date information. Great, thank you, uh, Kelly. And I will just say, it is, it, these are remarkable programs. I was never, never been so jealous of a dog. Uh, he looks incredibly relaxed on that first slide. Uh, I wish I could be there right now, but uh, you know, I would encourage everyone to check this out. The, 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 the writers workshop programs, these are summer camps um, for our youth in the community are amazing. I had an opportunity to swing by the, the Make Your Own World, um, showcase last year and the worlds were remarkable and creative and just it's just the creativity that comes out of our youth is remarkable so i would encourage you all uh, to check those out particularly if you have children uh, that would be interested in some uh, workshops this summer some camps i would also say we do have some, some limited scholarships available we want to make sure that these are uh, available to a broad range of individuals uh, in our community so uh, if finances are a challenge in particular, please see, uh, reach out to Kelly as well. And uh, there are some limited scholarships available um, for that. So next, uh, we wanna talk a little bit about uh, an upcoming series we'll be kicking off next week. Uh, it's sort of a spinoff of a panel we held a couple of weeks ago about leading in times of change. We know that uh, particularly for our schools and our districts, uh, leadership has been one of the uh, an important issue uh, in terms of making sure that we can pivot to uh, this remote environment that we're in and trying to figure out what the future looks like. So 
Uh, I'm going to turn it over to my good uh, colleague, Joe Dragoni, to talk a little bit more about uh, this partnership here with uh, the Capital Region Proceeds. Joe? Great. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks to everyone for, for jo certainly joining us today. And thanks for the invitation to uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the series that we have coming up. Um, we have three sessions set scheduled for over the summer. I'm really looking forward to it, covering a broad range of topics. And just to be really pragmatic about it, on June 10th, when we get rolling next week, we'll be talking about connectivity, access to resources, distance learning, and, and those kinds of things. And I'm, I'm thrilled to have some senior members of my team join us on that call. Mike Doty, who is the Assistant Superintendent for the Northeast Regional Information Center, um, provides network services and back end and all of the IT support for districts from the Canadian border out to Watertown, down over to Utica to the Mass border and south to Ulster County. So we have a, a huge region and a huge network that we cover. Um, Lauren Gimmel, our Deputy Superintendent, will also be on joining us next week. Um, she's done a lot of work actually leading everything around our essential ed website and all the standards aligned materials in there. Someone in the chat referenced that. Thank you. We're thrilled that you find it helpful. We've been up about nine weeks. We have 25,000 users, over 300,000 page visits um, uh, from all across the country. So that's very centric to hear, but it, it's, it's, the, the, all the lessons are standard aligned, so it's really getting a lot of attention. We're thrilled with that way that has gone. We also have a supplemental enrichment page that's gone up with that as well. So Lauren will talk about some of that work that's going and about the access around that. We also have Mike Solovsky with us who will join and talk about our distance learning program. And it's funny because we've been doing distance learning, I think, since 1996, if I remember correctly. We have the network is again throughout this entire region. Um, and schools have been sharing teachers and sharing classes. And back in my first administrative job in 1998 in Voorheesville, we had a distance learning room and we were sharing classes with districts across the region. So we have a real his rich history in that work. I think it'll be a great conversation if you are available next week. Um, and this notion of equity, which some folks raised before, and if, I don't know if you saw in the business review, they talked to one of the IT folks up in Washington County and, uh, and, and access is a, is a huge challenge um, and our rural areas and as much as it is in our urban areas, we might have access to it. It's hanging in from a, from a line out in front of your house doesn't mean that you can afford to get it either. So these equity issues are broad. Um, they're diverse as we are, as diverse as a region. I guess I would ask everybody to just think about that if you're going to join us over the next week about how we're trying to address those challenges and keep that work moving forward. Um, in July, we'll talk about health and safety and a lot of things related to that, which we anticipate uh, districts will be dealing with and the leadership challenges surrounding that in August. Talk about, hopefully we'll know, and in the perfect world we will, uh, about what the reopening is. And it's really, we're, we're planning on three scenarios where you don't come back at all, you come back a little, or you'll come back all together. Because um, we have to be ready for all of those. And, and the work we've done over the past week with um, our elected officials, with folks from the governor's office and, and other folks that we have been working with, we have really been emphasizing we need the guardrails so we can properly plan and have the right programs in place for kids. Um, and the same thing with summer programs as well. You know, we have summer camps, but we can't have summer school. And these are the things that we're dealing with in our community because access in certain programs that we talked about is that much harder, especially during the summertime. So I think it's gonna be a great series. Um, I know over the course of the summer, there'll be some great guests lined up that can speak to all of these. Excited about next week. Um, if you have an interest in all these things, distance um, and, uh, and, and, and access, what it looks like, um, what WebEx is, which is, our, which is our huge backbone, and it's an incredible networking tool, um, as well as how you pull through resources and, and how staff have been dealing with uh, managing those things and helping facilitate work with kids. I think it'll be a great session and I hope you can take the time to join us. Thank you. It's gonna be a great session. We're really excited to be able to work with Cap Region BOCES. They have such great depth of expertise uh, in this area. I agree with Joe, it's gonna be a, a robust session. Um, we'll also be joined by faculty from the School of Education. As those who have joined us before know, uh, like the Cap Region BOCES, we have a long history of, of it be engaged in remote learning. We've been a national leader in this space uh, for more than 20 years, consistently ranked by the U.S. News and World Report as one of the top 10 graduate schools of education in the country that provide online education. And we've got uh, robust 
online programs and literacy, uh, and in particularly our, our curriculum design and instructional technology program, uh, which actually prepares teachers to teach remotely. So in this day and age, uh, even more important in that in the context that we're in now. So do come and join us. It's going to be a great conversation, uh, a really ex exciting P20, I think, discussion about how we move forward in that space. Well, next slide. So next we have uh, Janine Flitton. Uh, Janine is with us from the Master Teacher Program. This is a statewide program that brings together uh, outstanding teachers from across uh, New York State uh, to work collaboratively with each other to build networks around professional development and to uh, leverage the, uh, the academic capital, intellectual capital of these amazing teachers to help prepare, uh, train teachers all across the state as well. And they've got some exciting uh, uh, things lined up for uh, students this summer. So Janine, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, um, thanks again for including us today. Um, myself and several other master teachers will be facilitating some summer STEM camps. Um, they're going to be running from the end of June through August and um, they're going to be geared towards children in grades K through 8 and they're really designed to help children continue to develop those um, critical thinking and problem solving skills over the summer um, and uh, really just in a fun and engaging way. Some of our youngest participants will be um, learning about structure and function and using the engineering design process to do such things as uh, build a fence that will keep Peter Rabbit from getting into Mr. McGregor's garden to uh, building solar ovens to make summer s'mores um, as well as uh, kitchen chemistry, some coding, and we even have one entitled um, Home Sweet Microcosm, in which the students will be um, developing uh, a self-sustained uh, environment um, and developing that over a series of four weeks. So it should be really engaging for the students, and, and it also will help um, them continue to learn how to learn at home, as we have started during this uh, time of remote education, but in a fun and, and creative way. So we're looking forward to, to working with them doing that. Um, the other part that we'll be offering this uh, summer will be some tele-teaching series. Um, during that, uh, various master teachers as well as other guests will be invited to come and share um, just strategies and beliefs and tools they've um, acquired over years and best practices. Um, they'll share them and then also lead discussions um, with teachers and, and um, on how to in implement them in their classrooms and uh, remotely as well. Um, the content will, like I said, be uh, geared towards not only remote education, but uh, traditional setting as well and will really support um, teaching in all environments. Uh, during the sessions, uh, there's gonna be an opportunity for people to pose questions, and it's uh, kind of a unique opportunity because we're also gonna be using a uh, Twitter feed through Atlas um, so that they can post questions that way and then continue um, to pose those questions even after implementation. So, um, that you know, once they're implemented, if, if parents come up with concerns or teachers have questions about how those strategies or best practices um, are being implemented, um, that there's still an, uh, an avenue for them to, to ask questions and get answers. So it's really a supportive environment. So. Janine, thank you. There was a, a question came up in the chat about how do people sign up for these things? Um, that may be a question for um, Rory, uh, who will, I'm, they're going to be, um, I'm not sure how it's going to be rolled out as far as that goes. Jerry or Rory, are you with us? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, okay. Jerry, you probably have more information about the signups for the camps, right? Correct. So in the next two weeks, uh, we will have on the remote ED website, um, we will have um, a drop down tab that is, is currently being established that will have summer camp. Uh, it will be entitled summer camp and there will be the registration information and all of the summer camp offerings. Uh, so uh, in two weeks from today, you should see that information available. And um, 
we are limiting registration. Uh, there will be uh, right now where I think the maximum is 24 per camp. Um, but I, and my understanding is that some of the teachers might um, accept more students in. So um, these camps will all be available virtually. Uh, so uh, they are not, um, in light of the current climate, will not be available face to face. Um, but in two weeks, uh, hopefully from today, you will be able to visit the remoteed.org website and um, be able to register for, um, we will have, uh, I believe there are nine camps that are going to be available this summer. Great, so we're excited about those as a father of three little ones, you just met one. Um, really excited that we're gonna have some of these opportunities coming up uh, this summer for, for our youth. So thank you, Janine. Uh, and Rory and all the master teachers for what, what you do and being part of this project. I will note too, uh, Kelly Westman did post uh, links to their, their website for more information about what's happening with the Capital District Writing Project. Uh, and for the webinars that we've talked about, the webinar series, uh, we'll continue to push out announcements the way we have with all of our community conversations. You can be able to sign up that way. So uh, turning next, uh, Gina Riley is here to talk about some of the, the mini and micro PD courses. Uh, PD for professional development that we have uh, coming up. So I think Gina, we'll turn it over to you. Thanks. So we are so excited about our five-hour mini PD courses. They focus for families and parents and teachers and admins. The focus is, of course, on homeschooling, which a lot of people are doing now, and self-directed learning, as well as remote teaching practices and effective instructional strategies and transforming literacy instruction. So these are async courses. They are five hours, again, five CTLE credits and registration is open until June 19th. We also have some mini credentials to talk about, which I'm super excited about. The mini credential is five courses and they are 15 hours each. So the courses are Home Learning 101, and of course we know that students and parents are all engaging in this new transformative education environment. So the focus is on home learning, both at home with special needs, as well as increasing intrinsic motivation and learning, because we know this is something that parents and families and teachers are going to need to know about. There is also a section on creating a decision-making curriculum for home learning students. I think especially in our post-COVID world, decision-making, whether it be child decision-making, teen decision-making, is going to be super important. Um, we also have something that's sometimes ignored in the home learning world, and that's a course about digital assessment. And so we will talk about things like e-portfolios and blogs and other ways that students who are home learning can really show off their work and can really be assessed. So we're super excited about these micro-credentials. Um, again, it's a five course package, 15 hours each, and classes begin on June 30th. There so is Oh, go ahead, Gina. Yeah, there's also a class on transforming literacy, and I think that's on the next slide. Um, that's really exciting. It's transforming literacy instruction with technology. It comes in a mini course for five CTLE hours, as well as a full course for 15 CTLE hours. So it's exciting to see how literacy will change over time, um, again, especially in this post-COVID world. Terrific. And I think uh, the question again will be how do you sign up for these things? And Jerry, I'm assuming that's going to be on the remote ED website? That will be on the atlas um, ed.org website. Um, since this is for, uh, and that will be available again in two weeks. Um, the, the mini courses, the five CTLE courses are already available for registration. I mean, that information is available um, through the Capital Region Teacher Center as well as the Capital Region BOCES excuse me, in Questar 3 BOCES. So I encourage you to, to, to look for that information there. Jerry, if you have a link to provide, maybe we could put it in the uh, text box so people can have it. But uh, I think always check back to the remote ED website and we can always redirect from there. It's a good, good clearinghouse of information. So next we're gonna bring up uh, Jason Vickers again, who uh, talked us through remote ED uh, to talk a little bit about some additional courses happening this summer. Yes, we're also excited about offering a micro-credential for remote education. Um, they're all five week courses. They're asynchronous courses and instructor-led. Instructor it's 15 hours per week, 
the micro credential essentially will lead to a certificate of knowledge within how to um, instruct in a remote setting. Um, one of our courses is digital tools for remote education and that covers the basics uh, including synchronous chat, uh, learning systems, Google classrooms and things of that nature that are, are necessary um, and will be needed. Um, we have another one on teaching and learning remotely in K through 12 education. We have a course on blended learning, which covers both in class and out of class learning. Um, in class would be like a flipped classroom. Out of class learning would be a blended synchronous, asynchronous type of course. We're gonna address equity within remote, remote teaching. We'll have one on interdisciplinary digital literacy and we'll have another on transforming literacy instruction with technology. Um, to get their micro-credential, you would have to take three of the five courses, and the Digital Tools for Remote Education is a required course for the, remain, for the rest of the other courses to take. But these are open to parents, to teachers, to administrators, basically to anyone who is interested in taking these and would like to earn the micro-credential. Um, these are going to start also on June 30th with the first one being Digital Tools for Remote Education. Um, and the uh, information will be listed on the Remote Ed site. And I believe uh, the link for remoteed.org is already in the chat box. So Jason, I just want to uh, highlight, I think you said these are asynchronous courses, right? So people can take them uh, uh, with, you know, in their own course of time, right? They don't need to show up at any point in time and, and, and be there. They can do the learning on their own schedule, right? That's correct. There'll be learning units that individuals will want to take. So it'll be like a little cohort type of base, but each week will be 15 hours and people will want to progress through on a weekly basis to, to keep up with everyone else. So it does match out to five weeks. And Gina, that's the same for the courses that you talked about? Correct. So it is self-paced, asynchronous, um, and you can join when you would like. So before the kids uh, get up or after the kids get up or while they're swimming in the backyard, whatever works for you, it's an opportunity to come together and uh, engage in this learning in that way. Or while they're taking a master teacher summer course at the CDWP uh, Writing Institute, you can join in and do some learning of your own. Terrific. So we're excited about those. And again, feel free to reach out or go to remoteed.org to find out more coming soon. Um, next, uh, another important series. Some of you, know, I think, highlighted one of the most important issues we've dealt with uh, recently have been the mental health uh, issues and the session we've had around stress uh, and well-being. And so we're uh, excited to be able to launch this new series coming up this summer uh, with two uh, real experts who've been with us before, Alex Petersey and Alana Gordis, uh, faculty here at the University of Albany. So Alex and Alana, I'll turn it over to you. Um, thanks, Jason, and, and thanks the opportunity to you know, have more of a space to discuss these important issues. You know, I've, I've recently seen people starting to talk about the fact that we're currently dealing with um, two pandemics. Um, one pandemic is a relatively new pandemic, COVID-19. Uh, the other pandemic, unfortunately, is a very old pandemic, which is the, the um, experience of racism within our society. And so we are coaching our series on stress collective trauma within these contexts, um, how, how to manage stress at a time where the country is experiencing uh, collective trauma. Um, in thinking of collective trauma, we also think about um, three aspects of stress and trauma, which are particularly relevant to the series we're going to be sharing. Um, the idea of uncertainty, the idea of unpredictability and the idea of powerlessness. And clearly all of those constructs are associated with stress and trauma, but they, they, they have a more of an urgent um, a sense of them right now. So we are going to be building on what we um, did a few weeks ago, We're going to be looking to delineate differences between stress and trauma. We want to provide both individual level and group or community level ways of responding to stress and trauma. We also want to couch our discussion in the context of um, disparities that exist in our society, 
and how collective traumas are experienced or collective spaces are experienced differentially by various groups, depending on their location within society. And then we also want to think about ways in which people can facilitate opportunities where they can experience a, a greater level of empowerment, both as individuals, but also as, as collective groups in our um, society. So we are, are very excited to be, to be both presenting, but also discussing um, the information with you. We want to emphasize that it's going to be a collaborative experience, a, a time of discussion. We'll present some material, we'll open up with some discussion. Um, and Ilana, I'm sure there are things I have missed, so if you can please fill in the gaps in my brief discussion or um, a summary of our series. I, I think that, that really summed it up, and I'm looking forward to this experience and to working with you on it. So I think that was really, that's great. Cool. Well, thank you both for the work that you do. Uh, it's it's thrilled, thrilling to be able to work with you. Uh, it's an important topic. Alex, I think for the reasons that you noted, and particularly right now, uh, we're dealing with multiple crises on our hands and people are, are being traumatized in different ways. And so I uh, hope that people will be able to turn in, into this uh, either for your own mental health or well-being or to help those around you uh, as well. That uh, We're all in this together. We need to collectively come together to support each other, I think, through all that we're, we're grappling with right now. Those are, that's an overview of some of the exciting things that we have coming up uh, this summer. It's a lot, I know it. We're gonna make sure that we've got a place on the remote ED that you can uh, go and find out more information about all of this. In addition to the, the, the uh, text box here, some th things have been posted. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to raise them now. You can put them in the text box. Uh, we're happy to respond to other questions you might have, provide some additional information. And again, if you have suggestions for what else we could do as a partnership and a community, uh, P through 20, K-12 and higher ed, uh, to collectively help each other navigate this process. Uh, we are open, listening, uh, appreciate any suggestions that you all might have as well. Well, I'm just Yes, Alex. Uh, Jason, could I could just add something that I, I overlooked mention sure. in regard to the, who the po the proposed potential audience is for our series? Yep. Um, it's important just to let folk know that that we are hoping for a, a very broad audience: um, teachers, parents, educators. You know, the material that we are going to share and discuss, I need to present it in a way that it has broad applicability. Um, so just keep in mind, and, and again, we'll be um, providing more materials outlining the specific session leading up to the series. Great. Thank you. Well, we thank you all uh, for joining us, uh, taking a few minutes out of your time today. My uh, deep thanks to our, uh, our presenter and our program leaders uh, who'll be with us here throughout the summer. We're doing the great work of trying to provide a more supportive and constructive community for all of us to, to navigate this work moving forward. I think at the end of the day, uh, our hope is that we are all uh, better able and prepared to deal with the, the crisis and the trauma that's around us, uh, as well as, and I think most importantly, making sure that all of our students and children have the opportunity to learn and be successful uh, in this environment. And I think that's the most critical thing that we can collectively hope for uh, moving forward. So with that, we'll end a bit early today. We'll give you 13 minutes back. Uh, on your afternoon. I know you all have great ways to spend those 13 minutes right now, as, as, as I'm sure I do. Uh, but we thank you so much for being with us. Uh, until we meet again, take care and be well. Bye-bye.